What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope everybody had a really good holiday. Hopefully everybody was able to spend some time with their families and get some cool gifts. Um, I know mine was really, really good besides the storm, the blizzard that hit us. Pretty much, I would say probably 80% of the United States got hit with the blizzard or experienced temperature drops beyond crazy. We did especially here, not so much as snow, but the winds were like up to 50 mile an hour winds. It was negative 37 with the wind chill. It was just crazy. Um, everything came, we didn't lose power or anything, thank goodness, but everything was all right. Um, so we got through that, you know, got through Christmas, and now we're looking forward to the new year. So hopefully I'm gonna have this video up before the new year. Um, if I don't, hope you guys had a happy new year as well. Um, but you guys aren't here for that. You guys are here for to watch me do some cool stuff, you know, create something from nothing um, and maybe learn something along the way. So today we're going to do just that. I'm going to introduce you guys something um, that I've never really done before on a vehicle. I've done panels and stuff like that, but as far as with um, graphics and things, I haven't done this for a while. So it's going to be pretty neat for me to experience and do this. Um, but just, you know, hang tight. It's going to take me a while. I want to probably speed this video up in some spots just that way you guys don't have to, you know, bore yourself with the monotonous taping and things like that that goes along with doing this. So um, if you guys have been following the last few videos, you know, I've been working on this old mini truck Mazda, Mazda mini truck here and adding graphics to it that I did um, last year. Um, so we're to the point, you know, the last video, if you guys watched the last video, go back and watch if you haven't, but the last video, I cut it short. Um, that was necessarily like the part one of this. This is part two. I don't want to reveal everything, so I cut that one short, but it gives you guys a nice idea of what it's going to look like when it's done. But I put a little bit of a twist on it because part two, we're going to be adding more to it. Um, it's not going to be just the graphics and pinstriping no more. Um, I thought about doing this um, when I was drawing it up. Didn't really know what it would look like um, with everything else that's going on in this truck. But I think it needs to be done um, because it's just going to set this off even more. Um, and then break everything. It's going to pretty much break itself apart from everything else that's on the truck. You know fill in some spots that need filled in so it's just going to add to it which is always good you never want to go go too much on it but you can overdo something really quick but this is just going to you know add that extra bit of you know sparkle to it that extra thing that it needs um, especially as something like this it's pretty crazy so um, what i'm talking about is i'm going to be adding um, chrome beveled graphics um, the edges to the yellow graphic that is on this truck um, if you don't know what that means is a um, lot of a lot of graphics you know back in the day that they weren't pinstripe a lot of guys put these beveled chrome accents around it and you know shadowed them and airbrushed them and you know put sh shadowing and highlights in them to make them look like chrome makes it look really really cool I'm going to do my own little twist and I'm not going to do the entire graphic in it. I'm just going to do the bottom edges of it to where it's going to flow from the front and kind of taper off towards the back of the truck to make it look like it's going to actually cut you at the end of it. It's going to be so sharp. Um, I think it's going to look really, really cool uh, once it's all together. Um, the only problem with doing this is it's a lot of time. If you've done beveled graphics or beveled edges on graphics, it just it's really really tedious work. You got to make sure everything lines up, make sure there's no gaps, make sure you're you know putting all those airbrush details in that need to be there without taking away to make it look like um, a chrome illusion. Um, so it's really really difficult to pull off, but if you can pull it off, it makes it look ten times better in my opinion and I think that's what this yellow graphic needs is it needs some little bit of a you know shine to it if you will that it needs um, added to it 
Um, just that way it's not just some graphic floating on the truck that's pinstriped. Obviously right now nothing's pinstriped so it looks kind of bare from the last, if you guys like I said, if you've seen the last video you know what I'm talking about. It just looks plain, it looks like just a random, you know, kind of objects thrown on the truck, you know, in the area that it's in. But with this it's going to actually seal it off and complete the look that I'm really trying to go for. And the fun part is, is the customer does not know I'm doing this. Um, I didn't run it by him. I kind of just told him that, you know, hey, I've got an idea. I'm going to do it. Hopefully you like it. I know he's going to like it. I mean, this this guy, if you're watching, you know, hopefully you're not watching. But if you are, um, you know who you are. Um, you're really, really letting me do my thing. You trust me with your truck. Um, and you just kind of let me do it. You know, you... This, the owners kind of gave me the free reign, if you will, to do. You know, he's mentioned what he would like to see in certain areas. And, you know, we, you know, he just kind of let me take the ball and run with it. So um, he really, really trusts me, which is really good for, you know, as a customer or as a somebody that's working on somebody's uh, projects. It's really nice because as an artist, um, you sometimes need those free reign parts to where you can actually just do what needs to be done because a lot of people aren't going to see the vision until it's fully completed anyway. So um, it's really, really nice when, you know, like I said, when customers just say, hey, you know, I trust you. This is what I, this is kind of what I want, you know, and kind of go with it. So it just makes it a lot easier on anybody that's doing the work. It just, there's not a lot of stress or just, you know, you're able to get in here and get it done and move on. And, you know, and the customers, you know, I've never had a customer that was like that, hate anything I've put out. It's always been the people that are, you know, they're really too close to the project and they just don't let you do what needs to be done. And it never turns out the way that either person wants it to be. So um, with this, you know, it's just really nice to have somebody just be like, hey, this is what I'm looking kind of for. And, you know, I trust you to do, you know, put your little spin on it and just get it done. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you know, seen the beveled edge look, um, I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about and what needs, you know, what materials you need because you don't need much to pull this off. Um, I'm gonna show you guys right here. It's just, I wanna be doing this with, I'm gonna be outlining it in three quarter tape and then I'm gonna be outlining the three quarter tape with this, I think it's a quarter is what this is. So it's a third of what the purple is. So, and obviously you need your, um, the silver, which the, a lot of guys will use a silver that doesn't have a lot of uh, metal flake or pearl or anything in it. They'll just use a flat silver to make it look like a chrome look. But I'm going to use a flashy silver, so it's going to look, I mean, it's going to sparkle just as much as the rest of this truck. So it's going to really play well into it. And then after I get done with this, I'm going to, I know I'm going to pinstripe the top of it. I don't know if I'm going to pinstripe the edge for where the beveled look is. I haven't decided that part yet. But uh, I'm leaning towards just pinstriping everything. That way everything's pinstriped. It's all finished off. Um, so now looking at the truck here, this is what I'm going to go off of. This is towards the front of the truck. So it starts down here. So every edge that leans towards the back of the truck, the bottom edge of it is what's going to get the beveled look. So this one, this one, this, and down here. Are going to get that um, so the thing you want to watch out for with doing this is how wide you want to make it you know you can make it if you're doing a really fat graphic if the graphic is taking up most of the area like it's really big you could do kind of a fat um, beveled edge look with, with these they're a little bit more skinnier so I think three quarters um, is going to be really really um, nice for this because it's just a perfect width you don't have to i don't have to fine line it by hand and try to create that because everything i do on one side i've got to, i gotta flip it over to the other side and make it look exactly the same so this way i can just let the tape do the measuring and as long as i follow the inside of this edge with this 
I'll be perfectly fine throughout the whole truck. So I'm gonna start here. It's gonna be kind of thick and then it's just gonna be tapered back towards the edge. And at the end where you got these, where it's actually stopped at, it's gonna taper off just like this and it's gonna come out just a little bit more, but it's gonna be really, really sharp. Not that this isn't already really sharp, but we're gonna make it even sharper and it's just gonna taper back into this area. So it's gonna look really cool. Um, like I said, a lot of guys will do the bottom and the top. And then when they do that, they don't pinstripe it, they just leave it. But I'm gonna add the pinstripe over top of it as well. So I'm gonna do the top for sure first, and then I'll figure out if I wanna do um, the bottom where the silver is, cause it might look cool enough to where I just don't pinstripe it at all. But it needs a little bit of something. I think the pinstripe's gonna do a really nice job with completing everything since everything else on this truck is pinstriped. So that's the plan. So I'm gonna set you guys on the tripod and I'm gonna outline it in this first, just like I said, the bottom. And then on the outside edge of this, I'm gonna be taking the quarter inch fine line and just following that tape line. And then I'll do tape, I'll do, I'll do the same with this while taping this off. And once I get this side and that side taped off on both sides of the purple, I'm gonna rip the purple off and that's gonna be my area that I'm gonna be painting in. So a lot of taping to do because the jams and everything, the tailgate, all of it's gonna get done. So I wanna set you guys up and just follow along. I'll kind of speed this process up because like I said, it's probably gonna take me a little bit. It might go faster than I think, but um, with doing the door jams and everything, making sure everything's lined up perfectly and how I want it to be, it's probably gonna take me a little bit. So I'm gonna set you guys up. So now you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Everything that's been masked off, I've just done the cab corner and the door. It's even the back side here. All that will be sprayed silver and masked off. And then all the airbrush work of the shadows and highlights and all that stuff will go inside. But you can see just by the orange tape, it looks like it's 3D. Now imagine that with the orange tape off and it's silver. So. It's gonna really, really give it that extra pop that it needs. Um, because like I said, it would have been fine if I just had pinstriped it and you know did my thing because it wasn't just a clean pinstripe, it was gonna be kind of like a, a messier pinstripe. Um, so it would have been look it would look good, but I think this just takes it to that next level that it needs. Um, I haven't done the door jams or anything like that. I'm gonna do section by section but that roughly took me just to do these two panels right here probably got 25 30 minutes in them um even though i sped the video up on you guys so it takes a little bit of time because you do have to be really precise because once you peel this stuff up um, you don't want any silver on your yellow and you don't want anything that's you know underneath of it to pop through which what i'm is um, if you tape this up, you need to follow this yellow line that I've got here perfectly. If you don't and you tape over the blue and you peel this up, you're going to have that blue underneath of it. And then you got touch ups or whatever to fix it. So that's why it takes so long is you got to make sure this stuff is right where it needs to be. The trick that I do, I learned this a long time ago from taping stuff up is leave a little bit of an edge to where you can see that other color coming through. That way you know 100,000% that you're not gonna have this color underneath popping through because you put tape on it. So that's just a little bit of, of a tip for you guys. 
on how to tape this stuff off because like I said, once you peel this off, even though I'm thinking about pin trapping this side of it, um, this side, when you peel that tape off, it has to be perfect. It has to look like it belongs to it. So it has to be one whole uniform section. So that's what takes so long. And obviously you wanna make sure everything flows really nice and is all even in here. So with this side being done, it's going to continue on to be this length until I start getting back to the back end. I'm going to taper it off, but uh, like I said, I'm going to fully do a section, then I'll move on to the next section and vice versa and make sure everything is nice and clean. Um, it's probably going to take me probably a few hours just to tape this up, probably a couple days, honestly, with putting plastic and everything, making sure everything's what I want it to be. So it's going to take me a little bit, but in the end, it's going to be totally worth it. I still need to tape off, you know, this section right here because the tape, this tape right here doesn't roll very well. Well, so like this corner, this edge right here that I need to tape off, it doesn't really do that rule. So I'll, I'll use a different um, width of tape right there, but no big deal. So I'm going to do the insides, the door jams of this. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure everything's wrapped around really nicely and sticking because you, like I said, you definitely don't want any blow throughs going through your other colors. So you just wanna make sure it's nice and tight, make sure you're not stretching it and uh, you'll be good to go. So yeah, I'm gonna continue on doing all And then uh, once I'm done fully taping everything off and we get to start spraying some silver, I'll pick this back up. That way I don't bore you guys because you guys don't need to see, you guys got the gist of it, um, but yeah. It's going to be really cool looking. Like I said, it's going to be a beveled edge. It's not going to just be, you know, one solid. We're going to tape it off again against the edge of the yellow on the inside. And we're going to make it a beveled. That way it looks like it's curving around. And it's going to look really sharp towards the back of it. So it's going to be really cool. So stick around to the end of the video. Roughly three and a half hours later, not kidding. We got all this taped up, masked off. Um, I'm one of those guys that like to kind of go overboard on the masking. I always want to double, make sure, I never want to have to worry about any type of overspray being anywhere that I don't want it to be. So I always make sure that I overdo it by not just a little, but a lot. So. It's, it looks kind of messy, but you guys get the idea of how to take this stuff off. Um, it does take a long time, especially if you're doing something big like this. But if you're doing like a gas tank or like a motorcycle or something like that, depending on how complicated your graphics are, it's going to take you, you know, it depends on how long it's going to actually take you to do it. So we got everything ready. Um, right now is the time to double check everything, everything you just taped. Even this took me two days to do it. I didn't do it all in one night. So... This is the second day, so I went ahead and went back over the stuff I did yesterday. Make sure it's nice and it's sticking and nothing's going to come up because once this is down, there, this is it. Like, there is no wiping anything off because it's right below a color. It needs to be really crisp and clean when you pull that tape off of there. It just needs to be exactly the way it needs to be and right along that edge of that that graphic, that top graphic you're going to, because if you don't, then you're gonna have a lot of touch-ups and that's just a pain in the butt. So this is just step one of this. I'm about to, I've already mixed it up, but I've got some silver. Orion Max Silver is what I'm using. That's what I use on everything. If I need to put silver down, it's what I use. Um, I've got about 10 ounces made up of it. I'm gonna, hopefully that'll, I, I'm pretty sure that'll cover everything. Um, because it is a lot of painting even though it's little tiny areas it's still a lot of spraying so i'll probably put uh, two or three good coats on everything to cover it and then i'm going to let this dry and then we're going to go back over with more tape before we bring in the airbrush to do our shadows and stuff to make it actually look like chrome so this is just step one 
is getting that thing covered in silver. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. Um, make sure, like I said, go over your work and double check everything. Make sure all that tape is nice and tight because you don't want it to come up at all. So go do that. And if you've done that, get your tack rag, start tacking it off, and then you're ready to spray. So I'm gonna put some color down and I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. So it took me four coats of silver to cover all the different colors that were on here. Um, I think if it was done like just basically in white and then cover it with silver, probably would have covered like two coats. But with all the different, you know, bright colors, it took a little bit more than I thought, just one more coat than I thought to actually cover all those colors. So I went around, you know, when you're doing this, you just want to make your laps and by the time you get done, with your first lap, it's time to start over again. That should be already flashed off. Solvent flashes really quick, so you shouldn't have much problem, especially with something like this. You're not putting a lot on it. It's a bunch of little areas, so um, always want to turn your gun a little bit down, you know, and your fan pattern, turn it down. You don't need it wide open. I never spray wide open on my air or my fan patterns, um, especially when doing something like this. You just want it to kind of lay out really even and smooth, so. Um, as long as you're doing those things, you know, make sure all your tape is down. Um, shouldn't have any problems. I'm going to let this dry until the, it's pretty late. So I'm going to let it dry until tomorrow. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back in with some fine line. I'm going to tape off above, right against that top edge, eight, that uh, fine line, that top edge right there. We're going to tape that off because we want to leave that silver. We want to leave that with nothing on it. That way, when we get done airbrushing and put our shadows and all that other highlight stuff in this, you pull that off and it's a clean line. That's where you get that beveled look. It looks like it's rolling around on you. So, that's the plan. Wait till tomorrow. That's just better. Um, it's starting to warm up. It's about 50 some degrees today. So, um, I'm going to try to get this t all done tomorrow and get the tape off of it. That way, if it does get colder next week. Um, I won't have any problems. And then after I get the tape off of this, we're going to do the pin striping. So um, right now it's not much to go. I mean, I know I keep saying that, but once you get all the taping done, there's a very little spray time when you're doing this stuff. It's 90% it's prep tape and it's like 10% spray time and it doesn't take very long. If I had a booth that was heated, I'd probably be able to flash this off like an hour, 30 minutes to an hour maybe, um, and then come back and tape right over it. But it, since I don't have a, a real baked booth, then I'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer. So that's the only thing that I've got to worry about. But for those of you that do have something like that, you can get on this really, really quick. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. So I'm gonna keep continuing this video on till the next day. So it's the next day. Got our silver spray for last night, so it's really nice and dry now, ready to be taped off um, with some fine lines. So, this process with you guys on beveled graphics. Um, next step is we're gonna have to grab some fine line again. You guys saw I was over taping or done taping? Nope, got more uh, fine line delay um, because you really want edge. You know, you want to follow this top tape line edge. So, grab some fine line, and you really the trick is to find what width you need uh, because you don't want it to be too big, you don't want it to be too small for the area you're doing. For me, this eighth inch tape is about perfect. So, like I said, you don't want it to be too big or too small, you want it to be just perfect because you're wanting this top edge part where you're going to be laying this fine line. When you rip it off and you get done, this is the only part that's gonna be, it's gonna be the brightest bright because everything else is gonna get airbrushed and um, you're gonna put shadows and stuff to make it look like chrome. So you want it to stay silver, silver. You don't want anything on it. So this is why we're taping it off. Um, now, obviously, as it goes back, it tapers towards the end. So we're gonna do the exact same with the fine line. We're gonna make sure it's tapered all the way back. So that's another thing. So you're gonna have to do this 
pretty much gonna have to do this all in one swipe. Um, so I might even just set the bed back down to where it needs to be and do it, but I can pull it off without it. But so with me, I'm gonna need to make sure the doors are closed and I wanna start from the bottom and go all the way to the top and taper it off. Sorry, I got some hiccups today, but uh, we're gonna taper it off towards the end here. So, cause like I said, you want that to stay this bright, bright silver. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and lay some tape here. I wanna show you guys what I'm talking about. And then I'm gonna just finish the whole truck cause especially when you get back here, when I got these areas that kind of taper off to different sizes, um, I'm gonna have to taper them. And this back here, how skinny it is, I'm gonna taper it as well. So there's a little bit of learning curve to this. If you've never done it, you're gonna have to figure out how wide you want it, how wide you don't want it, that kind of thing. Um, so it just, you know, you kind of do, you know, kind of like what you're eyeballing it. You kind of just want to do it that way, make sure it's nice and even all the way through. Uh, but at the your thickest point, it should be just following that, time, that tape line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lay some tape here, and I'll show you guys in a minute what I'm talking about. All right, so we got it all laid out. Didn't take too long, it's not too bad, as long as you just follow your lines and you know, stay true to what your design is, you'll be just fine. Even got the door jams done. Um, it's not very much, it's just that top line, you wanna follow it and just completely complete it, pretty much. So, um, I'll even go as far as getting some three quarter tape and I'll just mask the top of this off just because um, I don't want anything to blow through between this fine line and the paper and the other fine line. Um, and it may not be an absolute perfect width or there might be a crack in between. So I'll take some three quarter and go about doing that and just tape it off for a final tape off. But yeah, um, looks pretty good. So, I'm gonna, I mean, went back here and did this part of it. I'm gonna finish the rest of it and the tailgate and I'll pick it back up because then we'll be filling our airbrush up with some paint and that's when the fun start. So right here, you guys will see I'm talking and pointing and kind of explaining what I'm doing and starting the airbrush. Um, I've got some really over-reduced plaque in the gun. So I'm just following that top edge of the tape line there um, right across that fine line. I'm just barely, barely going across it. You don't need to really go too heavy because you don't want to go too dark too quick. And here shortly you'll see me go through and start doing some shading and some strokes. It's just going to be random um, depending on what kind of graphic you're doing of how the light hits it. You're going to want to create this to look exactly like as close as you can as chrome. It really doesn't take much. You just want to make sure you go really, really light. That way you can build it up because you don't want to go too dark too quick. Um, you really don't want just a straight black. It's kind of like different shades of gray. You guys can see that or not in the videos it's pretty hard to capture but in person you can definitely tell it's there um, like i said the trick is not to go too dark on it because like i said chrome is never just straight black unless it's against a black truck that it's reflecting so you gotta kind of just build it up and there is some spots that you might want to go a little bit heavier than others just the way it's got that contrasty um, element to it that way it kind of sticks out from here and there um, but yeah that's pretty much it um, if you want to go really really crazy you can put some white in there, over reduced, over reduced white, and kind of make highlights here and there. I'm gonna do that, but I'm not gonna do that till the very end because I'm gonna treat it as the whole graphic. So I'm not gonna just pick and choose areas. It's gonna be, you'll see when I when we get to that point, after we get this tape off of here, that's the next step is to clean it really good 
and then go back through and start adding the drop shadows on these graphics and all the highlights that I want to do. So we're going to do that just not right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the entire truck like this. I'm going to go over the whole thing and then we're going to start ripping off this tape and see what it looks like. As you guys can see, I did the trick. It's a lot of tape and a lot of work just for that little bit. Like I, I probably didn't have any more than 25 minutes and you know spraying that as far as the airbrushing goes and probably another 30 minutes and spraying the silver surf. For less than an hour's worth of work of painting wise, you know, we did three and a half, probably four hours worth of taping. So it does as you can tell from the hood, it just gives it that extra that it needs to really finish this off. And now you can imagine it with the pinstripe on it. It's just going to be a complete package from here. So it came out really, really good on the hood. And now is the time. You can even see down here how tiny that little, even though it was just a little bit, but it gives it that nice sharp point that it needs. Same way up here, it just gives it that nice little sharp point at the end of it. Um, and then we're going to pinstripe it after that as well. So it's just going to be really, really awesome. I can't wait. Now that was a kind of a fun part with the airbrush. And now it's going to be, you know, like I said, we're going to take all this tape off of it. And then I'm going to go back over and do all the drop shadows. And then it will really set it off once I get that done with the highlights. So I'm going to tear this tape off. And we're going to get the airbrush back in our hands and start doing those drop shadows and highlights. So it's all cleaned up tape is gone I tacked everything off now's the time to either clean it with a like a waterborne cleaner or go through with a tack rag get anything off that needs to be off before we go to this next step um, so now we're gonna go starting to do the shadowing and shading of the drop shadows within all these graphics so anything that is underneath something needs this drop shadow done so like this graphics on top of this graphics so belong here I need to do the drop shadow inside this pink um, behind here this graphic is over this vice versa this graphics over that so I need to go through here and just do drop shadows everywhere like along here again um, inside these circles because you're gonna see some inside them um, just small stuff like that all along here um, so it's gonna take me a little bit of time through this and do everything so I'm just gonna set the camera up and you guys just follow along um, you really want some really over reduced black for this because you don't want it to be too heavy you want to be able to build it up um, if you go dark too quick it's more of a pain to fix uh, because you're pretty much trying to wipe it back off but in this case I can on some areas so just over reduce your black that way it's kind of really really light and tinted almost like a candy the more you put on the darker it gets um, and then just do strokes a little bit at a time and you don't want to just go back and forth in one area you want to kind of complete the whole area at once so um, it's kind of tricky but just you know if you take your time slow down i've got the same black i used for the silver in my gun still so i want to make sure it's good and then we're going to start doing these graphics so i'm going to set the camera up and you guys just follow along for one side
Guys, so we got one side fully done. All the drop shadow work is done. The trick is to not get super, super close to it where you're making lines, but you want to be just far enough away to where it's just kind of fogging it in there. And obviously you want to stay off any of the graphic that you're doing. So yeah, that's just a trick. Go slow um, and over reduce your black and it'll just barely put it on there. Kind of like, just like I said, missing it on there. So, um, but yeah, that's it. I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to complete the whole truck after I get done with this video. And then obviously after that, we're going to go over a little bit. Of, might do some touch-ups here and there if I find any. And then the next video will be pinstriping. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to do white highlights and pinstriping. Um, so we're going to do all the drop shadows and highlights before we do the pinstriping. So, um, I'm going to finish this truck up. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys got anything you want to know, anything you want to talk about, comment down below. I'll gladly respond when I get the chance. So, yeah, I appreciate it. And make sure you guys subscribe. That way we can grow this channel to be something cool because I think we're to the point where, especially when this truck gets out again, um, last year it had really, really good response to the public. So I think when it gets out again that it's fully changed. And, it, you know, this is going to look really badass. So I think it's going to, this, I'm going to start to blow up is what I'm trying to say. So that's the, that's the goal at least. You know, I want to do three or four of these a year. Um, graphic wise airbrushing whatever all the you know anything custom I want to do at least three or four a year and then I'll be comfortable with doing this full time so and obviously throwing in some YouTube videos here and there so but yeah um, that's the goal and I think you guys are going to be start watching this channel kind of get bigger too because like I said I think it's I think this summer is the, the time where I'm going to start getting you know my name out there more and starting to blow up a little bit more than what I have been in the past because I usually don't go out and market myself like I usually do or I should honestly should supposedly do um, so I think this year with this truck I think it's kind of set me on another level because I after we get done with this thing like I said it's gonna look pretty badass so I'm excited so get excited too because you're gonna watch history in the making as I call it so but yeah appreciate you guys watching and see you guys on the next one.